Hello, and welcome to the start of a brand new game. As soon as the logos can load. Logos! A car, a car, my kingdom. Always loved that intro. All right, let's get this started. New gap. The British Empire in the 1480s. The Wars of the Roses, a power struggle between the House of Lancaster and York to decide a royal successor. Ah. Gosh, that's very bad set to little thing. The war between the two people was nearing an end. With the Yorkists well in the lead, the reign of Richard III was but a step away. And in France, Henry Tudor, the last Lancastrian heir, was being forced to live a life of exile. The Lancastrian forces were rendered powerless by the ancient cards of sorcery wielded by Seto and his seven followers, who are known as the Rose Crusaders. They served under the flag of Lord Crawford, a powerful Yorkist nobleman. Lacking a duelist to champion their cause, defeat was imminent for the Lancastrians. In England, dual card games were still at the fledgling state. Thus, the Lancastrians had to look elsewhere for a dual master capable of facing Rosen Cruz in battle. With this in mind, Margaret Buford of Lancaster secretly requested a high druid to summon a duelist from another age. Ooh. Summoned from the mystic circle of red and white roses, the one capable of harnessing pure power. There was truth to the legend of the Rose Duelist. Lady Margaret, I did it! Now we have the means of defeating the evil forces of Rosencruz! Oh, my apologies. In my excitement, I had forgotten I was in the presence of a Rose Duelist. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Simon McRuan, High Druid and Servant of Lancaster. May I be so bold as to ask the name of which the Rose Duelist would like to be known? Garmo? A fine name indeed. Now here's the situation. The year is 1485, and you are currently in Stonehenge, Stonehenge near Salisbury, England. The British Empire is in turmoil with the House of Lancaster's rightful claim to the throne being challenged by the Yorkists and usurpers. The power struggle is referred to as the War of the Roses. 
A name based on the badges used by both sides. A red rose for the Lancastrians, and a white rose for the Yorkists. Right now, our kingdom is threatened by the Yorkists and their wrongful claim to the throne. All because the Yorkists enjoy the support of the Rose Crusaders and their and their sorcerous White Rose cards. Using our Red Rose cards, we summon you, Garmo, to this day and age. We hope that your dueling experience will defeat the Rose Crusaders and lead us to victory. You will help us, of course, you will. Foolish of me to even doubt where your loyalties lie. Rumor has it that only a legendary Rose Duelist stands a chance against the power of Rosencrudes. We appreciate any help you can provide against them. Before I forget, I should warn you that the rules of dueling differ here than from those of your age. Here in England, dueling is governed by what is known as the perfect rule. In addition to several minor distinctions, there are two major differences. One is the existence and movements or positioning. The other is the deck leader concept. These are two aspects of dueling which were lost in the process when the ancient sport of duel monsters was adapted into card form. The perfect rule represents these lost rules that were miraculously revived here in England. Perhaps a practice duel will serve to better as... Oh, uh, whatever. No, I know how to play. First, you must suggest a deck to duel with. It is important that you feel the vibrations of a deck leader. The min the minute resonations that ring true to your soul. The cards themselves drive their power from the energies of the ancient ones. The deck leader acts as an intermediate between intermediate. That doesn't sound like the right word. An intermediate between the ancient ones and the deck wielder. Garbo, it is essential. Ah, too much reading. It is essential that you select a card leader whose rhythm matches the stirrings of your soul! Here are several decks of, from which to choose. Give it some serious thought and make your selection. Choose carefully, for the deck you select will guide the destiny of your duels. Let's see... Main attributes, light, dark, water, and grass, dark, 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 and water, dark, dark, and what's the black one? The, the purple psychic color one, that one's dark, so what's the black one? I kind of want a grass deck, so I guess I'm going to go with this guy. Ah, I see you have selected your deck! Hmm, so that's the effect of the Celtic Rose cards. It looks as though there are some truth to the rumor that Red, Ro Red Rose cards are capable of time transformation. Who's there? It's been some time since the Battle of Barnett's old one. Rosencruz, what brings you here? Only a member of the Rose Crusaders may call me by that name. If I, if I, you may recall, I told you once before that you may only address me as Sentu. Or does memory fail you, old man? And you, you must be the dreaded Rose Duelist. I must admit, there is a certain aura of power emanating from you. I believe as intro an introduction is in order. I am Seto leader of the Rose Crusaders. There are members of our little group who prefer to, by, to call me by the name of C. Rose Cruz. I ask you again, what brings you here, Seto? Mind your manners, old man. What else would bring me here? I've come here for the Red Rose cards. After all, it was you who showed me how the summoning capabilities would evolve when the Red Rose cards are combined with the transport powers of the White Rose cards. You aren't thinking of attempting the Forbidden Rose Summoning? If so, then the Red Rose cards must never fall into your evil hands. 
card sorcery taps into the powers of the Ancient Ones. By their very nature, each card is a double-edged sword that can cut both ways. The Rose cards alone harness tremendous power. There's no telling what horrors one might unleash to the world by combining both red and white. I will sacrifice my own life if need be, if need be to prevent any from uttering the spell of doom. The spell of doom. Cool. The sixteen red and white rose cards grant power over all. Druid legend has a twisted, has twisted the meaning of these cards. We Rose Crusaders have sworn the, to create a utopia, free from the ravages of war. We intend to accomplish this with the power of the cards. And we shall do so by extending the rule of Richard III throughout the known world. Whoa, this music is getting intense. By the way, it was clever of you to form a circle of red roses within the white rose barrier to summon the rose duelist. But you were foolish to come alone. This area is surrounded, and if you wish to leave with your life, you will do You will do so only by handing over the red rose card. Me? A fool? Then what about you? Are you fool enough to actually believe the red rose card would remain here in my possession? Right after the summoning, I had the card dispersed among our best duelists to keep them from your tainted hands. Then you leave me with but one option. I shall enlist the aid of your precious rose duelist. You take leave of your senses. And you speak too soon, old man. Heed my words, duelist. If you wish to return to your proper time period, you will require 16 cards of red and white roses. The red and white positions must be laid out in reverse of the summoning order to send you home. You know the spell? Since you need the 16 rose cards just as much as we do, I propose a partnership. Help us gather the cards, and I shall guarantee your return after we've achieved our ultimate goal. An absurd proposal! Do you think that the Honorable Garba would even lend an ear to your ridiculous proposal? Actually, I kinda am considering it. Why, thank you very much for asking my opinion. Can you be oh, so sure, old man? Let me see. Simon's side has a total of eight red rose- eight of the red rose cards, while my side the Rose Crusaders has possession of the eight white rose cards. As the numbers are even, simple arithmetic indicates that you could side with either of us. But I'm sure you will take into account who's winning this war. After all, who was desperate enough to summon you here in the first place? I think it's quite clear which side is better positioned to send you home. Garbo, heed not the words of this, this, this power-hungry lunatic! Simon, must you retort to name-calling? I'm hurt. I'll tell you what, why don't we leave the decision to our dear duelist? After all, Simon, the duelist's future is not for us to decide now, is it? it well, y yes, but, but... Splendid! In keeping with the tradition of the old Temple Gardens, I offer you a choice, duelist. Here are two roses. The white represents me, and the red for old Simon here. For the sake of justice, choose the red rose! Stand by my side, duelist. Choose the white rose. I think I'm gonna side with the red roses, because I want, I want to beat the white rose guys and get the white rose cards because the white rose people are better and so since they're better I want their cards yeah ultimate power how disappointing oh well you made your choice and I respect that for now I will guarantee your safe passage until you've met with Yugi after all I don't want our little game to end too quickly that wouldn't be sporting. 
I look forward to the day when we meet again. Until then. Prince Yugi, the last Prince of Lancaster, a true Welshman, and the hope of we who call ourselves Celts. My lord, may I present Garbo, the Rose Duelist. You serve us well, Simon. My mother was wise in summoning you from Scotland. You honor me, sire. Duelist, I am Yugi. Actually, Henry Tudor is my name, but I find it tiresome. You may call me you. I am sure Simon explained our situation, but it's only right that I request your services myself. I need you to return to England and put an end to the threat of the Rose Crusaders. Their White Rose cards form a barrier that prevents my armies from setting foot on British soil. Although we Celts have the Red Rose cards, we are but inheritors. Inheritors? Inheritors who are unable to wield their full power. In the hopes of reversing our fortunes, we gambled on a druid legend that spoke of a Rose Duelist. According to the same legend, one must use a deck whose cost is lower than the opponent's to capture a Rose card of another color. I believe that it is important that you keep this in mind. The cost of your deck should not exceed the cost of your opponent's deck. I would like you to note that our resources have been compressed to the limit, requiring us to invade England by August. My troops will land in Milford Haven, Wh Milford Haven, Wales, and march on to face the enemy at Bosworth Field. Having all of the Rose Crusaders out of commission by this time would be ideal, but as that might prove difficult, any reduction of their force might be would be appreciated. Right then, right then, let us part company and reunite in, in Bosworth. Simon will provide you with the details as to where and when we will meet once more. And there we go! Now we can choose to duel Weevil, or we can choose to duel Rex. I'm calling it a end of part one for now. Boy, this is, that was a long part. Let's hope the other ones aren't as long in the future. Till next time!